Welcome everybody here at the afternoon session at the second day of Sotom 2019. We start with a session now with, an with a talk from Vincent Privat about the Jersum project and I'm looking forward to your talk. Hi everyone, I'm Vincent from France and I'm one of the most active contributors of JOSAM, the Java OpenStreetMap editor. So as an introduction, some quick facts about JOSAM. You might know it as the oldest and most being used editor uh, still actively developed. It was created only one year after OSM itself. Its particularity, it has a rich set of features and the editor is greatly extensible so through many possible extensions. It is available on all platforms, Linux, Windows, Mac OS. It is translated in a vast number of languages. It benefits from an important community of users and you can check his website as josem.openstreetmap.de as it is originally a German project. My talk is divided in four parts. The first one will be the tech stuff. Then I will talk more about how we work, how we make JOSM. I will show you some interesting statistics. And finally, I'll conclude with what are we working on right now and what you can expect in the years to come. So first, the tech stuff. If we sum up JOSM, what it does, as an editor, uh, its main goal is to load, edit, render, validate, and upload different kinds of data related to OpenStreetMap. So I'm of course talking about OSM data itself with the original XML format, and since last year we support an alternative JSON format. Uh, we also support traces with the original JPEX format, and since last month, this is quite new, we support RTKLib, which is a high precision centimetric format. And we also support OSM nodes. To help you editing this data, we offer a large range of editing, search, and filtering tools with also a remote control possibility from external systems. We have many possible extensions. So you, you, you know probably the OSM presets, but it is also true for mapping styles, validation rules, uh, imagery sources using various protocols. You can also display geotag picture and also run audio recording in various formats. Concerning the technologies it, uh, itself, JOSM is built using Java uh, version 8 or later and is built using the Swing frame UI framework that is shipped with Java. We have very few software dependencies. Uh, here is the exhaustive list. Uh, you can see these dependencies are designed for very specific parts of JOSM. We tend to make all the possible work ourselves to keep JOSM as light as possible because binary size is important to us. I have colored the last two dependencies because they are written in JavaScript and unlike the other one, which are Java dependencies. Uh, their future is at risk uh, because of recent changes in Java governance by Oracle. In terms of extension, the main way to extend JOSM is by plugins. The community has created more than 100 plugins, so this is only a brief list of the most popular plugins regrouped in five categories. You can find first plugins that had new data formats and protocols, then a lot of plugins that had more advanced editing tools, especially the reverter plugins, um, next, we have plugins that had integration with various ecosystems around OpenStreetMap. I'm thinking about Mapiary or Wikipedia, for example. Then we have very specialized or localized tools for specific countries. And we have very technical plugins that are not real plugins, but just piece of software that ship libraries 
required by other plugins. You can, if you're interested in writing more plugins, you can find uh, the developer guide. After plugins, we have presets. I'm sure you all know them. Uh, presets are being defined using a very simple syntax using XML language. It's stable for years. So if you want more details, here's the documentation on the JOSAM wiki, tagging presets. Next, we have map paint styles. They are defined using a specific language, which is map CSS, which is basically CSS for maps. The syntax is very powerful. It allows you to do many, many things, and we in con continuously improve at almost every release. If you want more details, same, you have the wiki, map CSS implementation, and we have also the same syntax being used for validator rules. So with this syntax, you can check OSM data for potential errors and also define potential fixes to fix the data. If you want more specific details on this, I'll refer you to the slide being presented this morning by Clarice from Maxar, which are really great to get more insight on this feature. Now some words about project management. How do we work? Who are we? It is hard to define a real current team because we are all benevolent. So we work on our free time. So the team evolves uh, depending on the time available for each other. So in the last two years, I counted, we were nine developers who committed directly on the SVN repository for about 2,000 commits. So here are the list. Uh, we are all from Europe, from Germany, France, Austria, and Poland. And here is a rare picture of Josem developers eating pizzas and coding. Uh, it was at the invitation of Geofabric uh, last year in Karlsruhe. Josem is not just about the current team. Uh, Josem was built by many people before us. So the historic team counts about 30 developers in the last 14 years of development. So you can see the red crazy guy, it's me. I joined in 2011. After the departure, thank you, after the departure of the original creator who left the project before I joined, uh, you can see we had a peak of activity in 2016. That was because we participated in Google Summer of Code, and we had a very talented student who later joined the team. And you can see Josem is still actively developed. Uh, 2019 is still not finished yet, so the bar will increase. Josem is not only about coders. We also have translation uh, teams. We, are, we have a lot of people translating Josem in 36 languages, and this is huge work because Josem represents more than 11,000 strings to translate. So it's almost impossible to do it by yourself. You must be several. Uh, we lack some major languages, such as Arabic. So this is something where you can help us to provide more languages. So if you are interested uh, to add your own language, Please come see me, and I will explain you. In terms of development cycle, we release a new latest version, a new latest development version each night, and a new stable version at the end of each month. When the stable version is not so stable, uh, we can release uh, hot fixes a few days later, if required. Uh, for example, when we have critical bugs or an external change uh, not caused by us. In terms of how we distribute JASM to end users, uh, we recommend Java Web Start, which is a multi-platform and very efficient way to get JASM. But we also provide native binaries on each platform. Also, as a plain jar file, you can download using your own script. In terms of governance, we are an independent project. 
We don't depend from anyone, neither the OSMF, nor working group, nor private companies. But we have some sponsoring. A few more details just after. If we, if JASM had a motto, it would be OSM community before all. We really care about the community, the OSM community. Uh, this is clear in all of what we do. Uh, for example, everything we do is publicly discussed on the bug tracker. Uh, we allow anonymous tickets. Um, the choices we make when adding new presets are, guide are guided but by what the OSM community decided on tagging mailing list or on the OSM wiki. So we don't create tags ourselves. Uh, this is also true when we perform uh, technical migrations from one version of Java to the next one. We only do it when um, at least 19% of users already run this version. So this is quite of transparent for most of you. In terms of sponsors, I distinguish direct sponsor who contribute directly for the JOSM core project. So I would like to thank here, especially to Etzner, who provided for free uh, our server for six years, and Fosgis, who provides us a cut signature certif certificate for three years now, and the new server uh, since, the last, uh, since the beginning of this year. And we also have other company who provide us developer tools. We have also indirect sponsor. I'm speaking about companies who write JOSM plugins and make, make them available sorry, to the OSM community. So the biggest um, company who makes such plugins is Telenav. You can find them in the all. Uh, they created a lot of different plugins to uh, help on improvement of OpenStreetMap. Uh, we have also Apple, Microsoft, and Mapiary uh, working on their respective plugin. And we also participate in the Oktoberfest event, which is created by GitHub. So I talk about the JASM server. Uh, we are a standalone project, so we have our own infrastructure. So the server runs everything. It runs the project website built on track. We host the ticket system, allowing to report bugs and feature requests. Uh, as well as the official SVN repository, we have an online help accessible from JOSM itself. We have the message of the day that is displayed when you run JOSM and we list the available extensions. And we have CI and QA tools to help us to improve JOSM. For the continuous integration system, it is built using Jenkins. Uh, it runs, of course, unit tests every day, but we also have integration tests that allow us to check that JOSM work with the latest and greatest version of OpenGDK. And we check that JOSM is well integrated with ecosystem, such as Mapiary or Wikipedia, or we check if all tags, OSM tags defined as popular in tag info, as included in JOSM presets. One of the daily checks we make, uh, manual checks or semi-automated, are the checks of validity of translations of uh, plugins and various extensions. One particular time-consuming task and kind of ungrateful work is to check the validity of imagery sources. So each imagery source you can display in JOSM is listed on the, on the wiki. There are almost 800 sources and of course each day, a few of them are failing. So the task is to detect temporary failures from real, real failures or dead links. So it requires quite a lot of time as it, this is almost invisible. Now I'll show you some interesting statistics. 
First of all, the number of active contributors. So you can see in the last 10 years, it varied between two and eight contributors per month. So with an average, uh, with about four to five people each month. So it's very active. And I'm particular, particularly glad that, that since 2007, we had never less than two people contributing to JSON. In terms of lines of code, this is a very big project. Uh, you can see we have uh, more than uh, 300,000 lines for 200,000 lines of code. This is really big. In terms of binary size, uh, I'm proud we can still count the size of JSON binary in kilobytes. So it's only 13 to 40 megabytes today. Uh, we have a linear progression. And you can see in 2011, we managed to reduce the size. Uh, that's, wha that's when we switched from the old rendering system based on very verbose XML to the new map CSS language. In terms of tickets, uh, this is difficult for us. You can see the number of open tickets always increase. Uh, we cannot cope with the extremely high amount of tickets created each month on Josenberg Tracker. We still manage to close uh, many of them, but each month uh, the number of open tickets increase. So this is also uh, where you can help us to find duplicates or write better description or even better provide patches. Now I have two statistics about all of fames, but not of us, of you. Uh, this one is about the reporters. So the list includes in yellow uh, people of the team, so I don't count them. I'm only interested in blue people uh, who are not members of the team. So you can see since the beginning of the project, we have five users uh, who have created at least uh, 150 valid tickets, tickets which have been fixed by us. So thanks, uh, many thanks to them. Another Hall of Fame is to people uh, who provide patches to us, so same colors. And in blue, you can see we have seven users who provided at least 20 patches. That's a large amount. There are many other people who provided less patches. Another interesting uh, diagram is the versions of Java we required uh, across uh, our 14 years of existence. When JOSAM was created, it was using Java 5, which was the latest version available at that time. Uh, we are now requiring Java 8, which is still supported today. So we add uh, three different migrations to perform, to switch from one version to another. Uh, so as I said before, we wait uh, that as uh, sufficient users run the target version before we consider switching. But we have also other factors to consider. Uh, twice, the migration was blocked by the availability of the new Java version in Ubuntu LTS, long-term support, because this is by far the most popular Linux distribution used by Linux JOSM users. Uh, you can see the release cycle of Java change quite a lot, so the next version of Java we consider after 8 is not 9, it's 11 because now we have temporary version we don't really care about. So we will have LTS versions, uh, like operating system. But we're not sure yet about when we will be able to switch to Java 11, probably next year, but no promise on that. Finally, the last section is what are we working on and what can you expect in the years to come? 
we are currently modernizing all of our stuff. Uh, we are using a lot of old technologies that were up to date in 2005, not so more in 2019. Uh, so we needed first to that a new powerful server. This is done thanks to FOSGIS and OpenStreetMap France. Uh, then we are currently um, working on switching from SVN to Git, uh, Launchpad translation system to Transifex, uh, from a single and scattered repository across GitHub plus our repository, centralize everything on a dedicated GitLab instance, and tools from Ant to Maven and or Gradle, and also the same for PNG icons for to scalable SVG files. And you can see here the list uh, of tickets tracking all of these subjects. Another big work uh, that is going to take many years, uh, we are trying to modularize the application. Currently, the application is a giant block. And if you're interested in reusing some parts of JOSM for your own Java project, is currently quite difficult, so we want to ease this, and we also want to ease maintenance for us, and also um, reaching more to new Java developers. So we have a master ticket, uh, which will live several years. This is the current state of modularization, so you can see everything depends on everything. So it's difficultly maintainable. And this is the target. So we will have a lot more components, but without interdependencies. So it will be easier to maintain. And finally, the last subject. Um, it's about the complex situation of Java today. Uh, it, I could give a talk just about this. So. In a few words, um, Oracle, which is a company who, which maintains Java today, uh, made major changes uh, last year. Uh, this has a lot of impacts for us because they now focus on the cloud and on server technologies only. So they dropped a lot of technologies used by clients. So this has a lot of impacts for us and this is why I cannot say when we will be able to switch to Java 11. We have a lot of different technical problems to solve. So if you want more details, uh, you can reach me on Twitter or on the JOSM uh, mailing list, and here are the main links to provide documentation. You can find these slides released as Creative Commons and Wikimedia Commons. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Vincent, for the great talk about the JOSM program. Thank you. Uh, program. So we have time for questions. Are there any questions in the audience? Thank you for the interesting talk. I wonder if you ever encountered a situation in which there's um, different opinions within the team of developers whether you merge a certain proposal or not, and if so, how you resolve such uh, situations. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I have understood it. It's about the motivation? No. So, sorry. Yes. So, do you ever encounter a situation in which someone proposes a pull request and the active developers don't agree whether it's a good pull request or not? That's basically my question. The agreement between each, uh, each other? Sorry? Uh, we agree each other? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so as I said, everything is di discussed publicly on the bug tracker. Uh, we usually agree each other as well as we agree with the OSM community. So we don't have any particular situation where we have disputes or failing to reach a consensus. But sometimes it can happen. Sometimes we can also make wrong choices. Uh, which was reported by later by other people, and we, we usually revert uh, prob 
problematic changes. So globally, Josem is an happy family and we live well together with the OSM community as well. Are there more questions? Thank you. Does um, this modularity that you're aiming for, does that have any risks alongside it, such as the maintenance or speed? Or? Yeah, um, of course there are risks every time we change uh, the source code, but it's also easier for us when we switch from this to this, it's easier for us to test it. Uh, we have big problems uh, on uh, testability of the software, so I think it will actually improve the quality of uh, JOSM source code. Hi, Vincent. Um, Where are you? Here. Uh, uh, hi. <laughs> um, just a question with respect to moving the translations to Transifex. Yeah. Um, I know this is a slightly political issue, but would you consider moving the translations into the OpenStreetMap project on Transifex instead of keeping it separate? Because that would have the big advantage of being able to share translations and um, increase the number of translations available for, for JOSM and other projects which are in the group. Uh, the touchy issue for those that don't know is license, um, but there might be ways to work around that. It's a good idea. It's currently difficult to get a lot of translators, and so it's kind of a redundant work to translate almost the same strings between the different editors. So we didn't consider it yet, but it sounds an idea we can work together on this. No more questions? No. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thanks again, Vincent, for the talk. Thank you. And uh, you have time now. Okay, applause, applause. Yes. <laughs> Before we go to the next talk.